Find your mouthpiece and put on your jock strap. It's the Sports Blitz with Doug and Robbie. Okay, how long is your show? You guys have such a great setup. Hey, listen, so. if you're uh, under a rock or if you're in a cave, come on out and listen to our episode. It was fun talking baseball. Yeah. I love talking Red Sox. I love talking coaching. I don't mean? care because I would rather there not be an MLB season than have to sit and watch the colossal embarrassment. Hey, hello. I am Bloom. Yeah. Yeah, it's Doug and Robbie from uh, the Sports Blitz. I just wanted to find out when you need some pitching. There you go. In five, four, three. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Sports Blitz. I'm Doug. We have Robbie here. Robbie, how are you doing tonight? Doing great, Doug. Doing great. Uh, happy to be back with another episode. Very, very excited to talk uh, Talk some big game, sh- big game and, uh, I don't know, whatever, whatever else we decide to talk about today but i uh, know very excited to be here always a pleasure and uh welcome back to everybody to another episode of the sports Bloods. that's correct um and uh as as robbie typically says but i'll say it if you're under a rock or in a cave or you're probably better off than we are so you might want to just stay where you are and try to grab your phone and watch the sports Blitz on your phone if you can uh, if not, you want to come out and dare to come out. Um, okay. Welcome. Good luck. Absolutely welcome. Good luck. Yes. You know, we <laughs> welcome. wish you well. <laughs> welcome. It's, uh, it's, it's good, 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 good to finally see you again. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, we're going to talk big game. Uh, we're not talking about the uh, lions and tigers and bears, oh, my, from, from, uh, from the zoo or Africa or the Franklin Zoo over here. Uh, in, in Boston, uh, we're, we're going to be talking, uh, well, you said big game, so I don't really know what that talk would have meant, but, uh, we are going to talk about a big game, which makes sense. That is not, not a problem. It's just a matter of semantics, not a big deal at all, but we do have, uh, two, um, Wasn't that what you're supposed to call it now. Are you really not supposed to call it like the, the, the other day, but are you supposed to call it the big game? Like. I don't know. I feel like there's like trademark issues there or something. I don't have any idea. I don't know. You can call it the SB. Call it the SB. SB is good. I don't know. I was trying to, you know. SB is fine. You know. No, no, you you were absolutely right. You were absolutely right. I just didn't want them to get confused that we were going to talk about, you know, animals tonight. So, um. I don't think think anybody would have have done that. But, hey, you know, whatever. If if that's what your thought goes, you'd ever, uh, yeah. Listen, the guy in the cave just came out. He has no idea what we're talking about. Because he has been in the cave for a long time, and he figures if he's in the cave, he's going to see some animals. So we may we may be talking about that. Oh, makes sense. So you don't know, but we do have two sponsors. Our first yes. sponsor is Simon Organizing, and as you could see by by Robbie's uh, room, actually it doesn't look too bad tonight. Oh, that's pretty good. Um, it looks like uh, looks like he cleaned up a little bit. But anyway, <laughs> feeling overwhelmed. Yeah, that's right. Feeling overwhelmed in a room, closet, drawer, something like that, anything that needs to be organized, um, please contact Zyman Organizing. They will work with you to create and organize a great space and a serene space and a joy kind of space. So you can walk in and go, ah, this is really nice. Um, and it will be a joy to spend time in that space. And then you'll feel organized. Being disorganized in a space, in a drawer or in a, in a cabinet, or you open it up, you, you just close it up again. You, you just want to shut the light off. You don't want to go in there again. But Simon Organizing can help you with that stress that comes with that because there's all kinds of stress that comes with being disorganized. So they can help you with that. So just remember, Simon Organizing, creating a stress-free home. So we will have a link to them. Always. And give them a call if you are in any way disorganized. But speaking of stress, we have our second second um, uh, sponsor. Our second sponsor is, I'm just going to tell you what it is. It's a, it's a buddy of mine. His name is Wes Woodson. And he wrote a book. Oh, let me get that. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, Wes Woodson wrote a book. Got to see him on YouTube. His YouTube stuff is very funny, very good. Um, and, um, his background is he went to Babson college. He's been on Ted talk. 
Um, he, he's written two books on anxiety. He had a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress, a lot of stuff, and he writes some books about how he deals with it to help other people deal with it. And it's wonderful, it's great, and it's things that people are not talking about these days, and we really should, um, so we can get some help out there to everybody else that's out there who is having stress or anxiety, because everybody has it at one point, even if it doesn't, even if it doesn't affect you that much, everybody's got anxiety, so that's the way it is. So grab, I'm not necessarily telling him to buy his book, but definitely see him on YouTube. If, if you can add, get a chance to uh, grab his book, it's called I Have Anxiety, So What? Uh, which is great. Check him on YouTube. And that is our second sponsor. And we're going to, speaking of sponsors, uh, we're going to talk about a couple things. Uh, the first thing is the big game, the SB, the SB56, and their sponsors. <laughs> Check that out. And the sponsors. I, I'm uh, actually talking about, uh, obviously, I'm talking about SB56 that happened this past weekend. We're going to talk about the commercials um, also, which I thought were were fairly funny. Some of them were, were super. And some of them were like, I like looked at my wife and we went, huh? <laughs> so it was one of those huh moments, but it's all good. <laughs> And that's basically what Super Bowl commercials do, but we'll talk about that in a little while. Yeah. But I wanted to first wanted to first talk talk to you, Robbie, about the game because I know we Maybe you want to talk to me, not talk to somebody else. Because I mean, you know, I mean I've yeah, I'll talk to the guy in the cave. Is he around? Yeah. <laughs> Where is he? No, I just I wanted to I wanted to get a, a sense because I know you and me and and Craig and Kyle were talking about that's the the four of us. We were just kind of texting during the game a little bit and we were trying to figure out what was going on with this game and, and then we uh, got into a debate about sports announcers and things kind of went yeah, off the yeah, rails we did. But... We did. <laughs> yeah, it definitely definitely got off the rails and a little bit there but again um all of that stuff is all in good fun and and, oh, yeah. and i understand oh, i understand yeah. where craig was coming from he was just busting me and i was busting him back and that's just the way it is and and it's, it's all, it, it is, it, all fun it's all fun it's all fun, all it's fun, all fun until I'm somebody sorry. loses an eye um until but tony did, romo we was brought texting. up in which case then it's just like yeah yeah well, well we could talk about that a little bit well we could we could talk about who our favorite uh who, who our favorite announcers are for for super bowls if you wanted to do that just toward the end we could probably do that but what i wanted to do is kind of get into the game a little bit yeah, because course. i actually thought and again my wife this is probably unless it's a playoff game this is one of the games my wife actually watches which is really cool because she loves to see the commercials and so do i so we kind of watch it together I actually taped it as we were watching it just in case I missed a commercial going to the bathroom or something. <laughs> um, so I always tape it just in case I have to revert back. Although it doesn't make any sense because you can always get those on YouTube. So you yeah. can always find yeah. them on yeah, YouTube. I mean, so I mean, why am I taping this? Heck, you um, can find the whole game like broadcast just on YouTube. You can. I like, actually found uh, I actually found a recap. And the recap was actually I would have rather have watched the recap than actually the whole game although I, see this is what i want to do what just throw it out to you right the question right up front just throw it right out to you what did you think about this game i know there weren't too many expectations i didn't watch any of the hype the week before i didn't listen to sports there radio that much they're, they're really like i mean unless you're like in sort of the local markets i didn't really feel like there was like uh there, there wasn't, wasn't any buzz, hype there wasn't, there wasn't a buzz for the game no. like there is and like there's been in past years uh and maybe part of that's the fact that, yeah around here yeah you know, we really had no stake at all in the game i think that's part of the ones that made it actually yeah. very enjoyable for me was the fact that like there was no stress in the game because we really didn't have rooting interest we we're just kind of watching the game i was just the casual football fan just you know watching for the sake of watching uh a super bowl which i thought was really cool but i thought it was a great game i thought it was a great game overall i mean listen it was right down the wire i mean final literally in the final two minutes was when the rams you know finally scored uh to, to take the lead and uh you know to eventually win it and a big congratulations to them by the way right up front um, but I, I feel like it, it was very interesting because there were 
certainly some twists and turns in that game. Uh, and, and, you know, some definitely some moments that kind of could, could have and did sort of change the course. I felt like, uh, you know, of, of, of the game. And um, yeah, I just thought it was really exciting to watch. It's just, again, like a, a casual football fan, just with no stake in the game. It was just, it was fun to, you know, sort of see a game that, you know, wasn't stressful for us personally, but also wasn't a blowout. I mean, I know there's been a couple of times where like, I'll be watching a Super Bowl where it's like, you know, you're, you're against in those, one of those past years where, you know, it's two teams that you really don't have a rooting interest in, but then like one team kind of blows the other one out. And you know who's going to win. You know who's going to win. Like the one team kind of blows the other one out. And you're kind of like, why did I, why did I sit here for three hours and watch this game? Like what was, what was the purpose? I guess, you know, watching the commercials, I guess that's the only sort of justification I can, I can think of for those situations. But I felt like, and you and I kind of talked about this last week is that going in the one expectation we both agreed on was that it was going to be a close game. We felt like it was going to come right down the wire. Uh, you know, it felt like whoever had the ball last could potentially uh, sort of be, be the deciding drive of the game. And it, pretty much it was, you know, it came down to, you know, the very last play um, in a sense. And so, like I said, I thought, I thought it was a great game. Uh, you know, I am happy for the, the, you know, the Rams, you know, getting, getting a Super Bowl with a lot of their guys. It was their first Super Bowl ring and the Bengals. I mean, Hey, listen, they, uh, no one, and we talked about this again in past episodes, no one expected them to be there. If you told me, even at the beginning of the playoffs, that the Cincinnati Bengals would be in the Super Bowl, I probably would have thought you were, you know, you had some screws loose or something. Um, but I, uh, you know, unless, you know, you were from the city of Cincinnati. But uh, I, I felt like the Bengals really, you know, they battled. Um, I think they, they definitely made some mistakes, which ended up costing them in the end. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, we can get into this a little bit more later on, but I felt like the Bengals team sort of set themselves up where I, I could see them being, you know, one of these teams that's consistently now, at least in this in the next few years, you know, making a run at this game in the future. I think that they are a young team with a lot of talent, and uh, the fact that they got here this year with no expectations for whatsoever definitely sets them up well for uh, for the future. So those are sort of my in a long window way. Those are some of my uh, initial thoughts on on the game from Sunday. Yeah, absolutely. And and I, I actually think I actually think you're 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 spot on with that is that and, and to, to go from back to front, the Bengals are a really young team. We got a couple of guys on look at on their quarterback. LA. Look at their yeah. quarterback, second well, year I mean, in the you, league. You, you, exactly. You got a couple of guys on LA who are thinking about retiring. So and they may or may not retire. I, I don't know. Uh, but again, you got a couple of guys that are that are in that process, and they may come back for another year, thinking, "Okay, we'll put the same team together and we'll try to win it again." And oh, okay, that's that, that's okay. So you got a couple of guys that that are possibly retiring. The Bengals are such a young team; they have years to be able to, you know, keep coming back to the same positioning and maybe even winning it, depending on 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 you know other circumstances but they're such a young team it's great i didn't really have and my next question is whether you had any expectations um of the game because there weren't a lot for me going in but but what i what my thoughts were is that it it was a close game yeah was it was one of those things where it was pretty exciting like i know most of us winning we're kind of rooting for the Bengals because of the fact that we kind of picked them uh, between the four of us. Yeah. <laughs> and because we picked them, we were like, okay, I'm rooting for them. But I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why am I rooting for them? Because I don't. Well, it's kind of a Cinderella story, too. I mean, yeah, it's it was like just, the, yeah, the exactly. underdog story. I mean, yes, you, always, you, always pull, because, you always pull for the underdog. Yeah, exactly. So mostly it was because of that. But, but when, and then you find yourself like, then you find yourself, hey, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Um, LA is really a good team. Wow. They, yeah. They, did a really great job 
But I like the fact that it was really, really close. It wasn't a blowout. It wasn't. It, it wasn't not. It wasn't just a blowout. It was close throughout the whole game. It wasn't yeah. like the first half. It was like you know ten to seven, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you know that the Rams got like three or four touchdowns. And then you're like up, you know, huge. <laughs> and then you're trying to figure out how they're going to come back. It didn't turn out that way. It turned out that they kind of kept up with each other all throughout. I think, I think one of the biggest mistakes was is the Bengals had those three huge penalties, um, which really, really seriously cost them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that was, and, you know, I think Joe, I mean, Joe Burrow blames himself for the whole thing. And he's like, oh, you know, I play crappy and blah, blah, blah. But it's interesting because he really, really didn't, really didn't break, like, crappy yeah. at all. Yeah. I thought if you look at his well. stats, he was 22 for 33. He had 263 yards. Wow. So, I mean, that that's not crappy. Did he have any picks? I know. I remember Stafford throwing at least one, but I can't remember if Burrow threw a pick. Stafford threw two picks, actually. Yeah. Stafford, Stafford had um, 283 yards, uh, three TDs, and two interceptions. Um, did he have any picks? I didn't get that stat, but he had any picks. I don't think Hold he on. did. I'm, I'm going to do a quick little intro. I don't think Joe Burrow's here. had any. I don't think he had any picks. I'm sure you're right. I No, no, that's fine. If you want to look it up, that's good. That's fine. But I, I mean, I didn't personally have any real expectation going in. Um, but, you know, kind of wanted to get an idea whether you, you know, whether you had any expectations. He had no he had pick. He, just, just, you know, he only, he didn't have any picks. Uh, mm. No picks. He was sacked seven times, though, which is something that we should definitely discuss. Is that just the... The the sieve. I know I'm using hockey terms in a football talk here. But the sieve that is the Cincinnati offensive line is something that they right. definitely. Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna they get to that. I, 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 they definitely needs to be discussed and needs to be something for them going forward because the last two games especially have been brutal for their offensive line play. I no, mean, absolutely. <laughs> and we, we were gonna talk. I was gonna talk about the the. Um, right, I don't mean. I don't mean to jump yeah, ahead. No, on your no, no. That's fine. Here. That's fine. That's fine. It's not not a big deal. I just had kind of an order, but it's not a big deal because we kind of jump around anyway. It's just not a big deal. But <clears throat> I know you said you didn't have any expectations, but my only expectation was is that I was kind of hoping that it was going to be like a good game to yeah, watch. Yeah. <laughs> that was going to keep on the edge of your seat. And not be like, oh, this blowout. Because I probably wouldn't watch the whole thing. I probably wouldn't. I probably would. Right. Oh, LA's up forty-five to three. Okay. Well, you know what? I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna stop. I think. I, okay. We we know who's gonna win this game. Unless, um, unless it's twenty-eight to three in the second half, which in which case we have absolutely no idea who's gonna win the game. Right. <laughs> um. Yeah. I mean, that too. But yeah, we're not we're not we're not gonna we're not we're not gonna point out if anybody on this show turned that particular Super Bowl off. We're not we're not gonna go there. No. No, we won't. So um so I mean I didn't have any expectations. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I certainly didn't have any. All I expected was is I was just hoping that it was a good game. So we yeah. could watch a good game and same here. And and that we could we could see some touchdowns and we could see some sacks, which we did, uh, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, <clears throat> and we'll, we'll we'll see that kind of thing. What, what I wanted to ask you is, what did you think about? And we talked about it just briefly, just a few seconds ago. But I wanted to get an idea of what you thought the performance was of the the quarterback. Um, and and again, I told you what their stats were because. I mean, maybe the stats don't say what they actually, I mean, they actually did that. But sometimes, sometimes when you have stats that are, you could have stats that are better than the stats that are here and you could win the game or lose the game. So it doesn't really matter what the stats right. are necessarily. But I wanted to know what you thought of the, the two QBs and, and how, and how they, how they played um, again, the first time each of these guys are going to the Super Bowl and and <clears throat> Joe Burrow being so young and, and how he handled that that whole 
being on stage situation, although he's done it before. We talked about that on our last show. Yeah. But it is a different kind of stage. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, Very let's, different. let's face it, playing in the college football national championship game is up and playing in the Super Bowl are, you know, two completely different things. That's like, yeah. uh, yeah, that's like performing in like your high school musical versus being on Broadway. I mean, I, that's the only that's about that's about yes. the only comparison I could. I'm sure that comparison is way off, but I that's the only thing I can think of in that moment. No, no, that that sounds that sounds about right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, you know, I thought they both played pretty well. All things considered, I re- I really did. I thought they both showed a lot of poise for that big moment. And I mean, again, this was for both of them. You know, I know they're both on sort of different ends of their career. I mean, Stafford's, you know, a more veteran guy, and obviously Burrow only in his second year. But this was the first Super Bowl for either one of them. I mean, this was their first Super Bowl, like, as quarterbacks in this league. And I thought they handled the moment pretty well. Yes, they had their moments where you could tell, you know, maybe they had some some jitters or, you know, or whatever you want to call it. But, I mean, overall, uh, I mean, I thought they played – pretty well all things considered and they you know they really made it look like you know this is just a uh a regular season game for them and i thought again you know burrow i thought I handled himself pretty well it was kind of interesting the one thing i will point out about the quarterbacks is that they definitely showed a lot of toughness because i think there was like back-to-back drives where you saw each one of them like get up gingerly and have to walk off the field i think burrow actually the might- big- both limping, both limping, Both limping, you know, like literally field, within yeah. one drive of each other, which I thought was pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah, and we could talk about like the injuries of a, a little bit here, because uh, there were some some injury issues throughout the game for for both teams. But uh, I thought they showed a lot of toughness, a lot of grit, uh, a lot of poise, and uh, like I said, overall, I thought they played. I thought they played pretty well, all things considered. Yes, I, I I certainly think that they had they had a tremendous amount of poise, um, a tremendous amount of you know, I, I know what we need to do. Let's get this done, kind of situation. I didn't watch a lot of the pregame either. I went right to the game, so I didn't Same. watch any. Same. Again, yeah. did not watch any of the hype because the hype doesn't mean anything. The game means something. Yeah. It's fun to watch the hype because you just, you know, I kind of laugh at it <laughs> as opposed to, <laughs> as opposed to, you know, really believe any of it because I think, I think most of it's just crap. Yeah. Um, you, you never and, know what's going to happen. I feel like in these games until no, it actually happens. No, like, you, you, you don't. Yeah. And, and it doesn't matter. Oh, well, this has to do this. Joe Burrow has to do this to win. And this, well, yeah. I mean, isn't that stuff kind of obvious? <laughs> he's got to throw. He's got to throw touchdowns. I mean, he's got to get. He's got to get into the end zone. Yeah. Then you get points, and then most you may points win the game. wins, Doug. Most points wins. Just yeah, saying. exactly. So I, I'm thinking that you know some of the stuff that they say is kind of you know redundant. True. But some of the hype is just like, oh, I just can't stand. It. Especially if you've been watching it all week. Um, I've been avoiding the NFL channel. <laughs> On radio and TV, I've I've been avoiding sports radio, but I've a lot of the sports has been at least uh, it's been some football, but not every single minute. So, and that's been very good because we've had some other teams that have been doing fairly well here. So, uh, one in particular, but um, you know, where it, it's one of those things where there's there's always something to talk about. But when it, when it comes to you know the Two QBs. I thought, I thought Joe Burrow came out and he played a. Even if he doesn't believe it, I thought he played a great game. Um, I thought he was, uh, you know, I, I thought he was very poised out there. He did. He did seem like at first, and they kind of, for lack of a better phrase, <laughs> feeling each other out when they first came, you know, come in because you do that. You try to figure out, okay, what defenses are they throwing? What, 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 you know, what, what could we do on offense to try to trick them a little bit? You know, what kind of, um, you know, signs and signals can we throw out there that's going to throw them off? You know, you try to do that kind of stuff to, to kind of start the game. So it, it's always, it's always a little different each time. But I thought the two QBs were, it just played great. And if you look at their stats, 
really super close. Yeah. We're talking 20 points between the two of them. You're talking 263 versus 283. Yeah. Yeah. You don't see that in the Super Bowl. No, I mean, no, not you don't at all. See the, I mean, the closeness of that. You know, the veteran versus the young kid. I thought the young kid did a great job. Yeah. And I thought that he, you know, you're going to make your mistakes as a kid. You're going to, and, and the fact that, you know, he could have done certain things in certain certain situations. Yeah, I get that. But again, he's young. He's a young guy. He's he's, uh, he's already proven that he can get to the big game. So, again, I think it's just a matter of, um, you know, some fine-tuning with him. Um, I'm not talking defense and offense, uh, but I'm just talking about him personally. With Stafford, I, I, guess, I, I, I guess I felt really good to know that he, he actually went out and actually proved himself. He, he proved that he could leave Detroit and, and, and go to the big game and win the big game. Yeah. When, when he had to do it, he did it. Super team. I mean, really, really great team. I mean, I've played them on, on my, <laughs> on my, on my Madden. Uh, I actually played them the night before I, I played them. I played the Bengals versus LA the next day. Um, so I, I'm not going to tell you what the score was. It was crazy. But um, <laughs> it wasn't that. It wasn't 23 to 3. Uh, 23 to 20, I'll tell you that. Um, but I just thought he went out and proved himself. It's such a phenomenal job of going out and saying, first of all, kind of giving the finger to Detroit, saying, no, get away from me. I'm done with you guys. I've gone somewhere else and I'm proving myself. And he went out and did it. So I, I, I thought he really did a great job. I mean, did you notice um, how like Detroit is like kind of trying to claim claim victory <laughs> because Stafford won it? Like they were selling these like kind of uh, funny like Detroit Rams like gear like leading up to the Super Bowl and stuff like Detroit Rams. Yeah, I'm, su- I'm surprised. I'm surprised they haven't tried to throw a victory parade at the streets of Detroit for Stafford. <laughs> Uh, at least not yet, but I just thought it was kind of funny. Like, you know, the Detroit Lions fan base pretty much latched on to uh Stafford of the Rams in this game, which I just like I said, thought was kind of humorous because you're right, it was kind of like a big middle finger to the city being like, Hey, look what I can do now that I'm no longer there, you know, in your in your 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 crap. Uh, and mm. uh, you know. Basically, I mean, the first year that he leaves there, not even, not even like, you know, a few years down the road, whatever you want to call it. The first year he leaves, he goes and wins the Super Bowl in LA. I mean, just, you're talking about sort of adding, adding insult to injury there. You know, you lose your, you lose your sort of favorite quarterback for the last decade. And all of a sudden the next year, he literally goes and wins a title with, with the other team. So I just thought that was, uh, that was quite something there. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure he's pretty glad about that too. And I'll tell you if they ever invite him to, to have, uh, to, to, you know, walk down the street and, and wave his hand, like he's, you know, uh, Detroit asked him to do that. I, I, I wouldn't do it in that, in that respect, because it's not, it, it's like he didn't win in that city. And I get it. I understand why Ray Bork came back. Um, I totally understand that. You've been with us for a really, really super long time. <clears throat> One of a fan favorite. I'm not sure. I don't I don't follow Detroit sport. So just I see kind of on Bleacher Report or ESPN, ESPN News or whatever. <clears throat> but I wouldn't I wouldn't do something like that. Um, but but I thought they both played really, really well. And, and that added to it being you know, one of those really good games that, yeah. that you look back on and go, oh, yeah. uh, but I wanted to kind of revert back to what we were talking about before, which is to talk about the defense and the offense. I wanted to start with the defense. Um, so what did you think about the defense um, of, of both teams? Again, um, you know, uh, Stafford being intercepted twice um, and um, Joe Burrow, no interceptions at all, but, oh. you know, we're, 
talking about you know the the defense being being fairly good keeping LA to 23 points I mean losing yeah. the, in, the, in a losing effort but still you know he beat to that. yeah I mean I thought both defense again I thought both defense both defenses played well um I felt like the Rams especially like at the key moments of the game really really stepped up and made the plays that they needed to. And obviously they have a great defense over there. I mean, coming and we all know, I mean, Bob Miller, uh, Donald, I mean, you know, all those guys uh, are, you know, you know, like veteran talented defensive players. And they really showed it, you know, game in and game out, even before this particular game. And uh, yeah, I mean, to your point, I just think both defenses really, you know, they made, some big plays. I think the Bengals defense, you know, that, that last drive, you know, when, when LA went down and, and took the lead, I mean, they, they made some mistakes, especially on the penalty <laughs> front, uh, you know, some big penalties there, you know, down in down in the red zone and on their side of the field, which, which kind of led to that ultimately to that um, game winning TD. Um but I thought overall, I thought it was a very well defensive play game. I remember remarking at several occasions just how much of a defensive battle it was at times with both, you know, both defenses really just shutting down at times, you know, the, the opponent's offense. And, uh, you know, I, I know we're going to talk about the offense in a second because I have some thoughts on the Cincinnati play calling at certain aspects of that game. Mm. Uh, but the yeah, I mean, both defenses definitely played like Super Bowl caliber defenses during that game, and uh, I think it just came down to the Rams defense making one more play or one more stop when they needed to. Um, that you know that was the the deciding factor ultimately. Yeah, I mean, I you pretty much said everything I was going to say um, <laughs> about the defense. Um, I thought that that that. Um, you know, it, it did come down to one or two plays here and there to uh, to be able to, to to push them to push LA forward and uh, be ultimately win win that game. I know you you're dying to talk about this offense, so I, I wanted to just wanted to just throw throw right back to you and talk about this offense. The I'm sure you want to talk about the the offensive line. Line of the Bengals. Oh God! Um, yeah. So I mean, yeah. So what a what offensive, what offensive what a, line. Right. I mean, right. Exactly. I almost felt like that meme when you like see the security guard and just is like slightly patting down everybody, like as they're going through security. I mean, it was right, like, exactly. It was that. It was yeah. that. Uh, that much of a again, not to use a hockey term too much here, but that much of a sieve uh, in terms of just the mm. way that they. I mean, he got sacked. Burrow got sacked seven times. Seven yeah. times, even like even on that last play, you know, fourth and one, and I don't know why they were throwing to begin with on that fourth and one, but that's a that's a discussion for a little for a little bit later on in this discussion. But I mean, just they and the problem is we've seen this now. We saw this two games in a row because again, going back to that Kansas City game in the AFC title game, he was sacked nine times in that game. Now they still won. They still somehow managed to pull a rabbit out of a hat and win that game. And they, you know, they came close in this game too, which sort of goes back to that whole discussion about the Cincinnati defense and how well they played and the job that they did. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was just, it was, it was, it was, it was tough to watch if you're Joe Burrow. I mean, yeah, if you're, if you're a Joe Burrow fan or even just watching him as sort of an outside point of view, I mean, it was just like hit after hit after hit. And no wonder why he got up kind of, you know, gingerly, especially on that one particular play, um, you know. Well, he was sandwiched and his 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 uh, ankle kind of turned a yeah, little bit. Yeah, that's what and I that, mean. That, by the way, in slow motion did not look good at all. No, no, it didn't. I'm shocked that he stayed in that game after seeing that, you know, on, on the replay. But Well, you tape it up and up, rub a little dirt on it, then uh, yeah, you can get seriously. back in there. There was no way he was going to miss that. No, but I just I, it he was could just, have had a broken leg and he probably would have gone out. There. Yeah, he he loses the leg. We see about one leg out there playing in the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl, <laughs> running around out there. But not uh, crutches, like skinny guys. Yeah, yeah. 
That should make that stop should it, make help, it. Her, help him that way uh, the offensive line was playing. Um, <laughs> oh yes. But uh no, I mean I just I, I thought it was um I mean hey listen, both the offenses they made plays when they needed to. Obviously, don't get me wrong. I mean, especially the Rams in that last drive, and again, they were helped out by some penalties. Um, there's no question about it. But at the same time, I mean Cooper Cup, I mean, is definitely one of the best young receivers in the game for a reason. And uh, some of the catches he made were uh, were extremely impressive and obviously caught the game winning touchdown. I mean, I felt bad for for OBJ, you know, second quarter, you know, complete you know, free non-contact injury, you know, unfortunately, you know, turn, you know, turns the wrong way and ends up tearing his ACL. And, uh, you know, I was happy, you know, that he at least now – gets gets a ring i mean obviously since they pulled that game out but uh was was tough to see um you know him him go down like that i i felt bad um but yeah i mean i felt like both offenses had their moment it's kind of like one of those games where like both the offenses had their definite moments of strength but they also had their definitely their moments of weakness as well and i think the big over overflowing weakness was that Cincinnati offensive line. And uh, like I was saying before, Doug, I, I really do think that Cincinnati, if they want to sort of live up to now, what's going to be sort of the expectation of at least being highly competitive uh, for a Super Bowl berth, you know, sort of year in and year out now, you know, going for at least through this, through this stretch, <clears throat> they've, they've got to, you know, make some investments on that offensive line because it's just it's not gonna it's not gonna cut it the way it is right now as we've seen in the, the last two games. I mean 16 sacks in two games, you know, usually you're you're talking about numbers like that and multiple I'm losing, he's alive. Multi I know seriously multiple <laughs> loop, but usually you're talking about that multiple like losing efforts or a team that you know doesn't really have a whole lot of success. So, so to be talking about you know that kind of thing for a team that finished you know runner up in the super bowl and afc champions is uh remarkable but i i mean if you're if i'm in cincinnati Bengals, i am literally backing up two brinks trucks to literally go out there and get the you know the the highest caliber of offensive line you can find because what they have right now is just it's not cutting in the next hit for burrow maybe maybe you know maybe the one that really does some damage and, uh, yeah, yeah yeah i know i mean hey listen he missed basically all of his first year due to an injury from uh you know from getting hit and uh yeah you just you you do not want to see something like that happen again so um if there was a glaring weakness and a glaring you know sort of takeaway on the negative from that game it was the bengal's offensive line period end of story you know send send a print yeah, I mean, it was. I, I totally agree with that too. It, it it wasn't the 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 offense that was that was kind of given uh, by Joe Burrow. It was his protection that was the issue, um, and or lack of protection, I should say. Um, there was barely any uh, protection, and, and I'm surprised he just came out with a little tweaked ankle. Um, because again, you're totally right. Um, having you know 16 sacks within two games is unacceptable especially in a playoff a very important playoff game and in the super bowl it's totally unacceptable and and um i think he he, he shrugged it off and he came out of it but um uh, in a losing effort but i just i just think they do have to they do have to do some tweaking uh and moving some people around or getting some people if they're right, if they're expected to be, you know, continue to be the favorite in the AFC, you know, they need to do what Bill did last year, which is to go and just grab a whole bunch of, uh, you know, a whole bunch of offensive linemen um, and, and and make sure that they can protect. Well, the only thing, it's... the only thing I was going to say is, you know, watching that Bengals offensive line the last couple of games, I almost felt like I was watching the Patriots offensive line at various times this season because how many times did you and I during before and after Patriots games talk about how, oh, God, Matt got hit again. Oh, God, God look at how many times right. Matt got hit yep. during this game. I felt like I was watching kind of the same thing, the same yeah. circumstance yeah. in that game that in the last two, like I said, for the Bengals that I was, uh, you know, watching Mac all this season. 
Uh, and again, that was a 10 win playoff team in the Patriots this year. Uh, but just, you know, you, you saw a lot of that here in new England, which is why it sort of stands out. I feel like for us is because we saw that so much this year with Mac just play after play. I mean, I felt like, I felt like there were some games where there wasn't a play that he wasn't getting hit or wasn't, you know, getting up from something. Uh, mm. So it just, it was a, it was a, it, it was a very, it, it seemed eerily familiar to what we were dealing with, with our own offensive line issues this season and uh, definitely makes it, makes it something that we can, that we can definitely uh, attest to uh, for sure around, around here. Yeah, and, and again, more or less not just talking about the offensive line for the Pats because I really wasn't kind of doing that. I was talking about spending the money. No, 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 money. I know that. No, no I just, more than that, but you're I more right. I more wanted yeah. to bring up the Pats offensive line. Of course. Like, no, it was it was, was, just, it was there's a, a lot of similarities there. So, you're right. Yeah. It, it was it was a sim this year, and I'm I, you know, I we're just very lucky that Mac didn't get hurt. And, and, and so some, yeah. some, uh, way and the Bengals are lucky, up. like you said, that Joe Burrow literally came out of that those two games would maybe <laughs> a little bit of a tweaked ankle at one point during the Super Bowl. I right. mean, it was it could have been a lot worse. Yeah, tape it up, tape it up, rub some dirt on it, and get back in the game. And yeah. that's what he did, uh, which totally makes sense. So they do, and I think that's that's uh, one of their jobs for this off season is to is to really. Um, see what they can do about about shoring up the the uh, the offensive line and making sure that he doesn't end up on his back 16 times in two games. Yeah, uh, two very very important games. Yeah, but even in the regular season, because you know we don't want the guy to get hurt. He's already done yeah. that for a year. He didn't want to do that again. So it's yeah, it's definitely shoring up the uh, that particular that that particular spot. But it's also finding out on the other side and, and on LA side whether there's two, um, is it Whitmore? It's Whit Whitfield or Whitmore? Whitworth. Um, Whitworth. Is Whitworth. 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 Yeah. I knew it was Whit something. Uh, Whitworth, who's uh, possibly going to retire, he said he's he like he forty-four years old. He's forty. Like he's four, yeah, he's four. He's forty-something years old. Yeah. Yeah. He is. Yeah. He came back. He he, he didn't play most of the season, but came back for the last. Uh, I want to say like three or four games or so, uh, but did come back, came out of retirement to come back and 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 hope to win. Um, but um, so that's one guy, very very good um, lineman. And then you have Donald, um, who is so the thought. Although he did say on uh, was it Jimmy Kimmel last night or some, one of the one of the one of the late doc shows. He said that he would like to come back for one more year if if everybody was coming back, they could do it again. Ooh, where where were for Donald? Donald. Okay. Donald said. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I heard him on um, sports radio this morning. He had said that he would <clears throat> if if everybody was coming back, he would do it. But. Um, but you know, I mean, that's that that's what it is on on that side. But um, wait, but Don, but yeah. Don, don't, wait, but not not to nitpick here. But Don's a defensive line. Yes, I, I understand that. But I was talking about the retirement of. Oh, Coach. okay, oh, okay. Yeah, I was just talking I, about about two I got, players I got that could lost retire. In the conversation there. So. Yeah, two players that could retire that are very good players that that yeah. that had uh, that had. Um, a, a very uh, not just a very good game, yeah. But um, you know, Don, I don't know. I'm not sure how many sacks that Donald have had, but he had a couple to a few. Yeah. Oh um, yeah. I haven't looked that up, but but again, he was he was part of that whole last play kind of situations, um, where he had grabbed. Was it Joe Burrow trying to get to, to the? Yeah. Yeah. yeah he yeah. he basically that, and that's what kind of was. What He's I the one that grabbed about. him and and pulled him back with all of his strength. And then he tried to get rid, tried the, to get rid of it, and like almost incomplete it, but it came a yeah. little bit short. Yeah, I showed my wife how he she kind of pulled him back. She was like, oh, "Yeah, I'm like yeah, it's why he is who he is. That's why they put them on 
in that position. But that's what I was talking about. I was talking yeah. about the retirement of two guys versus, you know, having a young squad and as, as the Bengals right. um, young right. squad. Um, wanted to ask you, I, I don't know if you saw it or not. Um, I skipped over this question because I wanted to talk about kind of the whole game versus whatever. I wanted to talk to you if you saw this, and this is just something that is in my mind as I was writing these questions out, is uh, did you see the halftime show? What did you think? I, I did see I did see the halftime show. I I personally really enjoyed it. I mean, I I thought it was really well done. I got a lot of I got a big kick out of some of the moments of it. I've always liked um, you know, all those artists that were involved. I've always liked their their music and stuff like that. I mean, sort of music that I grew up grew up with and uh, you know, sort of came in to my my own music wise uh listening to i mean 50 cent was one of the first cds that i ever bought like as a as a teenager get rich or die trying i mean uh bobby's a yeah. wannabe rapper yeah i really am i'm 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 like the next uh, vanilla ice you know i mean just really yeah <laughs> no god <laughs> god no that that's all we need i gotta call robbie vanilla water yeah, no, just don't because he's we, all we, melted. We don't even need to go down <laughs> that road. Um, but no, um, I, I think that I know. Like I said, I thought it was a very well put on production. I really, I really enjoyed Fifty Cent coming out. Speaking of Fifty Cent coming out hanging upside down, I thought that was a pretty funny callback to uh, his his one of his music videos for uh, for In the Club. You know, which was pretty much his biggest hit uh he kind of kind of you know re re uh recapped or you know replayed that video by by doing that although you know 50 50 might want to uh cut down on the calories there a little bit look he was looking more i was kind of joking with some people he looked more like uh one dollar than he did 50 cent but uh that's a whole story for a different for a different time uh <laughs> Yeah, you could address all the 50 cent hate mail to, to me. Uh, I'll, I'll bear the brunt of that. Um, but Listen anyway, better, folks, I didn't say that. I, I know. No, hey, listen, I'm, I'm fully, I'm fully, you, you, you know, you can blow it. Don't, Doug has nothing to do with this. You could definitely, again, this is the, the, the views expressed by me. Oh, well, yes. Are that of Robbie, me. It's, it's 50 cent oh, God. on the phone. Okay. And, and what, what? Oh, really? Okay. I'll 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 warn him that thanks for calling. Okay, thanks. Bye. Oh, by the way, I thought you did really well. Um, I thought I thought his performance was really good. I just, yeah, I just think fifty cents going to be showing up with some boys at the house. So some guys, okay. some of his guys, okay. some of his right. friends. Maybe I'll throw some uh, some pizza out. Maybe I'll distract him. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, oh god. Um, I but no over. I like I, said, I thought I thought it was a. In, in all seriousness, I thought it was a really, really well done performance. I personally really enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know, obviously, you know, sort of the, the reaction is definitely, as it always seems to be with these halftime shows, definitely been mixed on online on social media. But I definitely love the camp that, you know, thought it was a, a very, very well done, um, well done performance. So that's where my, my take on it. Yeah, no, that sounds that sounds good. I, I I will tell you the truth. I actually didn't watch it as it was happening. I watched it later because uh, I was kind of curious, you know, being a DJ for so many years and actually yeah. playing some of this music. I was interested. I thought the performance was very good. Um, I thought it was. Um, I mean. Do I like other halftime shows with other, you know, well, when you're talking about some of the older games, older games, some of the past games that I've watched and the halftime shows, um, I, I just think that, I mean, I may like because I, I like the other, I like that kind of music that I'm not a big hip hop guy, but yeah. I do like the music. Um, I do have some of that on on Spotify, um, but uh, you know when it comes to um, you know others performing, um, 
you know, Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake at the, at, at the Super Bowl. That was fantastic. Although there was a little bit of a malfunction. A My wardrobe tiny malfunction wardrobe malfunction. One. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of a mal- malfunction there. Um, but, um, you know, th- those, those things, I guess, happen. Um, but, but I, I, I thought it was good watching it, watching it kind of later on. But, um, other than that, um, you know, I thought it was, I thought it was a good solid show. I, yeah. I didn't, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't like, oh my God, I can't wait to see these guys. I really wasn't like that. Um, but I thought as shows go, it was, it, it was good. It was good. Yeah. It was good, solid, a good solid showing of, of, um, of their music and, and, uh, and obviously hyped up the crowd. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it's always good that way. Um, speaking of entertainment, can, we, can I, 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 can I just ask one final game related question before we move on to the, the next segment? Uh, sure can. And I was just, I was just curious because this has sort of been part, you know, something that I sort of, the thoughts have been percolating and I wanted to bring up, I wanted to get your take also on the, the final series for the Bengals when obviously they, you know, they needed to go down and try to tie the game and they have second and one and they run the ball with their backup running back as opposed to Joe Mixon. And then on fourth and one, they throw the ball. And obviously we saw what happened there. So I was just curious, just, you know, briefly your sort of take on, on the play calling there in a situation where, like I said, they only needed a field goal to try to, uh, to try to tie that game up and send it to overtime. Yeah. The, the, the play call was horrible. It was a horrible play yeah. call. Yeah. Um, why was Mixon not in the game? Like I, I just don't. I don't understand why you. Have I don't your understand why you don't game. have your best. Your best running back. Um, it's it's fourth and one, correct? Well, it was um, third and one when they when they ran third and one, the right. back. They right, ran yeah. with the backup on third and one. He got right. stuffed, and then they tried to throw it on fourth one. That was when Donald got to, to Burrow, and you know he came up short. Yeah. No. I, I mean. I, I I don't have any explanation for it. No, I, I just don't think either. it was a really bad call. It was a bad call. Yeah. Um, I think I think both both third and fourth down were both bad call. I mean, yeah. I just you had two chances call. to go to Mixon, and you just you didn't. Right. And I don't I don't get that. You only need one yard, and it's Joe Mixon, who's a very talented running back, and has been your stalwart all season long. And you don't go. I mean, I just I don't I don't. Yeah, I didn't get it either. Correct. And I understand why they didn't just, I mean, to, to throw it on fourth and one, when you have fourth and one, when he could have, when Joe Burrow probably could have dove over and gotten the one, come on, <laughs> really? I mean, really? I mean, just try to get through and try to, and, and I understand how, you know, you, you can't, there was one play and maybe it was that play um, where he tried to, he just ducked down like this and tried to push his guys forward. It was Joe Burrow who had the ball and he was just trying to push him forward. And it's like you, you don't do that to to try to get yardage because all you're doing is stopping yourself. You have, right. to, you have to go over. You have to go 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 to the sides. You have to do something. You have to have you have to have your best running back in the game. Either on third, you do it on third. If you don't get yeah. on third, do it again. And and do a pitch or something and pitch out and try to yeah. get and Mixon would have just put his hand out with the ball and took on the first down. So it, it just didn't make any sense that he wasn't in on on either one of those drives on either yeah. one of those down. Yeah, that, that 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 was my big point. Bad, I, bad, I, I bad don't know call. why. I don't know why. And, unless Mixon was hurt. No, he but he was, wasn't. The coach was even just on the side. The coach right? even said it. Just yeah. it just yeah you know, that that was just the way they decided to go with it. The Mixon was perfectly available. So I, I just that was the one thing from a personnel point of view. It was just like I looked at it, I was like, why why is Mixon not in the game right I there? Like it, it. It, it didn't it made no sense to me. Didn't get it. It didn't get it. And it was it was it's a really good question. Don't understand the play call. And sometimes you don't understand it. Maybe they saw something we didn't see. He could say, "Yeah, it was just something we threw in there." I mean, hindsight is thought. the best foresight, and maybe it's like it's like the Seahawks throwing at the one yard line when you got Marshawn Lynch, and then you get picked off by Malcolm Butler. It's like that was it's great, though. Say, uh, that was no, great, though. Hey, listen, no, we love that. 
Don't get me yeah. wrong. We lo- around here, we love that. We thank Pete Carroll but was every it, day but, for but, doing that. But was that. it the right call? No. No, of course not. You have Marshawn right. freaking Lynch. Why are you correct? Run the ball. Why you, exactly. <laughs> run the damn ball? Like yes, like. exactly, <laughs> exactly. But again, we, we we've never. I mean, we played you know uh, flag football, but we never we never really played. You know, Rivers Day Camp, we played flag football, which, by the way, turned into tackle anyway. But <laughs> um, but w- without pads, uh, in the mud, typically, and raining, and thunderstorms, and snow. Um, no snow. No snow. Just, just everything else. <laughs> everything else. But we didn't care. We didn't really in a care. a tornado, you know, they yeah, fighting in a hurricane. Shirts and everything. skins. Yeah. Shirts and skins. We, we didn't care. So we haven't played professionally. We haven't played in college. We haven't played even on even, even on a even on that you know that higher level. Uh, so we don't really know what their thoughts were, except the logic is the logical explanation is that there is no logic. No the logic explanation is is that they were trying to throw them off. Uh, they were trying to you know maybe they did a different count try to throw them off so they get a penalty, they get the five yards, get automatic first down. Maybe they were trying to say, oh, mix is on, where are they going now? Are they throwing it? Are they going to the, I mean, where are they going? Not to have your best running back in the game in that situation, wrong decision. Even if you weren't going to them, put them in the game. Wrong, just a bad decision. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm totally, my, I'm totally with my you. Thought, I'm to- no, I'm, I'm totally with you. I mean, that was that's 100. percent Well, my thinking was it's just like again, it goes back to the question: why, why, yeah. why, why is Joe Mixon not in the game? That's it's literally the deciding drive of the Super Bowl. Even if Joe you Mixon- weren't going to him, even if you weren't going to him, and and maybe you do that. Maybe you do a little and play. I, was, I mean, a little play action, maybe something like I that. Put, yeah, I put in the text. I put in the text. Why aren't the Bengals just doing this little play action passes to the sidelines? Because at least you can get two or three yards. At least, you know, if you get two or three yards on a, on a first or second down, you have less yardage to go to get yeah. that first down, but you're, you're going down the field. And that's what sometimes you have to do with a good, with a good defensive line that's getting to you more than two or three times. <laughs> Uh, it, it's, it's really important to, to do those little, little, little out passes, um, yeah. and to try to get the ball. I mean, that would have been perfect. Get, get the guys to come up as much as you can, throw it over to Mixon, Mixon crosses over and maybe gets you because he's a strong son of a gun. Maybe he gets you not just that one yard, but he gets you, I don't know, four or five, maybe six. And they only needed like 20 more yards to get into this field goal range. If that, exactly. I mean, exactly. that's the thing. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm. Sometimes we go through these, and we've talked about these. <laughs> we talked about these in our past episodes too, and, and we're trying to figure out why. If we know this, how come they, they don't, don't know it? it. Yeah, exactly. So it doesn't make any why, sense. <laughs> what is going on here? So there's something that they see or they don't see, and the logic is what they're never going to tell us. Never going to tell. We're never going to know. We can just speculate. Terrible call. Third yeah. and fourth down. Terrible yeah. call. Terrible call. And that ultimately what? That ultimately cost them the game. Exactly. That was that was the decider right there. Yeah. Ultimately cost them. The game. Yeah. That, that's just what it is. Yeah. But I mean, I know we talked about entertainment, but I, I wanted to go to our next segment because yeah, we of course. kind of talked about the game and I wanted to go to our next segment, which is all about the commercials. <laughs> all about the commercials. That I thought the commercials were some of them were some of them were very, very funny. Um, some of them were, eh. Some of them were, eh. <laughs> um, So I wanted to get an idea. I, I, I'm assuming because you watched the game, you watched some of the commercials. I wrote down kind of my favorites, what I thought were my favorites, and what was my favorite one. Um, there were a couple that I thought were were really very funny. Like I was laughing like pretty hard. Um, and, and so just want to get your impressions of the commercials this year. I know, I know they spend a lot of money. I think it's what, four to $6 million now that they spend. Uh, yeah, I think it's like 7 million, 7 million now. Yeah. It like used to be months. like one or 2 million. And now it's, they were showing like how it's like sort of, it's gone up and up 
like throughout yeah. the years. Yeah, I think it's up to like seven million now, which is crazy yeah, to me. Crazy. It's seven crazy for a thirty second but, Super Bowl. But, but yeah, but you have to understand that seven million dollars. If you got it, do you know how many people watch the Super Bowl? Oh, of course. Oh, of fucking course. worldwide. Of course, worldwide. So of you're getting worldwide. I think we should have in the next Super Bowl. I think we should we should start now because the Super Bowl just ended, and I think we should have a a a uh, GoFundMe page for the sports blitz. Oh God! Going, wait, 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 wait. Two twofold. Going to Radio Row and doing <laughs> and actually going to uh, wherever the Super Bowl is and doing Radio Row there because we can go on and and do our radio uh, our our show there, and two, putting a commercial together that says, "Hey." We're on Radio Row. <laughs> so two, two different ones. We'll, we'll, so we we'll, only need a few. We'll get that. We'll get that going right away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we'll get GoFundMe that going right will away. be the GoFundMe will be up tonight. You know, it's yeah, I, th- I really think there's a lot more that we need to. <laughs> that's not as important as like say, oh, world hunger. <laughs> so I think that's if people if people if people actually want to donate money to send us to Radio Row, I think they might want to reconsider their financial uh, decisions there. I think they might want to consider putting themselves in a home first <laughs> yeah. to get the finances. I mean, trying to send us to the next Super Bowl is a little bit um, <laughs> crazy. But I wanted to get your opinion. I wanted to get your opinion on on the commercials this year and, and how they work. Because some years, I'll tell you, some years I look at them, I was like, "Wait a minute, I've seen that one right before the Super Bowl, or that one was horrible, or that how did yeah. they just do that? What? How was that?" So I wanted to get your opinion on what what you thought about the commercials. Because it's so so cool. here here's my here's my the, here's the the honesty about that, and I, and I do have a couple that sort of stuck with me that all that i'll mention here coming up in a second the honesty for me about every year super bowl commercials is i watch them and then i honestly because there's so many and so like just go they're just sort of throwing me bang bang you know sort of one after the other after the other i feel like every year i forget about 95 percent of them like immediately after the game <laughs> so i have to go you know if i really watch i go back you need on to go YouTube to youtube and, and find them and, yeah Looked them up, but I, I will say the two that stuck out. It's interesting because actually, um, shameless plug here. We did our on a couch talking sports. Kyle and I, great show by the way. Uh, did our on a couch talking sports Super Bowl review last night, uh, which the episode will be posted soon. Uh, and we had like a very in length discussion because Kyle's a big entertainment guy and you know a lot of times you know our super bowl reviews definitely delve into the uh the commercials and the halftime show and all that and we definitely did and so kyle actually was the one who while he was giving his takes definitely reminded me of some of the commercials that i had forgotten about the two that stood at the two that the funny thing is the two that i remembered and sort of stuck with me after the fact one was the one, and I again, I forget exactly the product for the first one. I know the second one was about the NFL specifically, but the first one was um, Larry, the one with Larry David, and he's like saying like no to every. It's like he's either saying no to everything or sort of giving like an alternate point of view to everything. And it's like all these different moments throughout time, and Larry David just sort of shows up. It's like, well, but what about this? What about that? Blah blah blah. And sort of his typical larry david uh larry david way and uh, so that one that one i kind of got a chuckle over and um the other one was the <laughs> nfl one where like the kids are watching the game and all of a sudden the players like in animated form like come jumping out of the tv and actually are, like are running around the house and are like just sort of make you know messing everything up and uh you know it's kind of like a takeoff it seemed like almost on the Super Bowl commercial from a couple of years ago where like they're at that dinner and like the the players are like start a big football game breaks down in the middle of like the Super Bowl 
Well, those yeah. were animated players, but they were real players. Like, right? Um, yeah, no, 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 yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were, yeah, yeah. Real no, I just players. wanted to make sure that I was talk- I thought I was thinking about them. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, no. They were no. They were. I'm no. You're absolutely. You're. You and I are on the same wavelength. There was right. the one with the real players, but then they sort of come out of the TV and they're an animated right, right, running right, around right, the yeah. house. So. Yeah, and they're trying to catch the football. They're trying to like grab yeah. the football in some way. And then right. like okay. the, they like like they get it from the ma, the grandma or the mom or something like that, and then right. something <laughs> happens at the end with her. I forget exactly what it was but um yeah that so those were the two that kind of like really stuck out there i'm not necessarily saying that they're like they're my they were my favorites those are just the two that sort of stuck with me above all the other ones and then the other one that i just got a big kick out of i didn't even see the commercial but i definitely heard about on social media was there was one for uh some crypto business or something like that that basically had a uh yeah i'm sure you know the one i'm talking about the one that had the uh, qr code bouncing around the screen or something like that the two basically yeah, it was more things, of a pain in the ass than anything else basically the two things that i heard about about that commercial after the fact were one that like literally five minutes afterwards so many people were trying to go to the qr code that the site crashed and nobody could get to it <laughs> and second of all <laughs> um the other that one makes was, sense. That, the other one was how you know when you open it basically it's just you know uh, a sign up <laughs> for for crypto i mean it really was basically was just a, to sign up for the website so i thought that was kind of i got a big chuckle out of that as someone who does not understand nor intends at all to understand cryptocurrency or bitcoin or anything like that i'm gonna come right out and say that up front um I don't get it. I don't, I, don't really, I don't get it. I don't want to get it, honestly. Um, but yeah, those are sort of the ones that that stood out to me. Honestly, I mean, I know, I know that there are a ton of others, but again, just like there's so much content that it, like 95 percent of it sort of just goes like in one ear and out the <laughs> other, basically. You know, five there minutes is. later. Um, yeah. But I definitely am curious to hear your take doug about the the commercials i mean i know you were sort of saying you know you were looking them up on youtube and stuff like that so definitely you know definitely i'm looking forward to hearing what uh what your thoughts were on uh on this year's batch of super bowl commercials yes definitely i i just looked them up just to kind of see them again uh because i had seen them already once but i just wanted to kind of see them again to see what what they were kind of all about again and kind of really get into them a little bit but i will tell you um the commercial with eugene levy driving in the car um that was that was so funny because it's it's from it's from the netflix hit shit streak and my my wife just finished it just recently so when we saw eugene levy in, in that in that sports car and he's driving around and all of a sudden he comes up to another sports car and his his, his wife in the in in the show, it Mora, it, it her name isn't Mora, but her wife in the show is 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 in the other sports car, and she's like, <laughs> it was just it was just like they were in character, so it was kind of very interesting. I just thought it was very funny because I think you can live. I think unfortunately funny. I missed that one, but uh, I I'll, yeah, it was I'll it was really it. really it was really really good. Uh, them racing around. <laughs> Cars, which is just kind of crazy. The show Shit's Creek, if you ever get to just see it, um, it's actually called Shit's Creek. Uh, not spelled that way, but it is called Shit's Creek. <laughs> it's on Netflix. If you get a chance to see it, see it. Please see it. It's very, it's very S- funny. It's, it's S C H I T T S. Correct. Correct. <laughs> not but, the other one. It's, it's very funny. It's very, very funny. And it's very good. I still have to watch the rest of it. I haven't gotten a to do that. My wife has watched the whole thing and she loved it. So, um, so that was the first one. Um, there were two electric car commercials, which I thought were kind of interesting. These are electric cars that are out there right now. Uh, the first one was like a dog robot that was kind of looking out and trying to figure out what's going on and finally saw this electric car and, and stuff like that. So that was really kind of cool. Um, just to see that that and, and then the dog was chasing the car to try to get into the car and then the dog falls and and it looks like the that it looks like the dog you know the dog falls off a building and crashes <laughs> down 
and the guy who's in the car goes over and charges the dog back up and the dog's fine. And then you see the dog in the car, you know, with his head up on the window going, looking, like, looking around, going, no, no, no. So it was kind of cool. I mean, they obviously did not. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure um, uh, no dogs, no electronic or dogs were dogs harmed, were making harmed in, this, in the <laughs> making of this commercial. I just thought that was really cool. Um, yeah, the electric car one. Um, there was another electric car one, which I thought was kind of interesting. It's this, um, uh, it, oh, it was Arnold. It was Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger with a beard. And he was in the car and he kept changing the lights. So it was, it was a, a, like this lightning stuff where this electric charge was coming out of his finger. And he kept changing the light. He kept going, he kept going, he kept going. And, and, and that was a good commercial. So if you see that one, that's really, really good. Um, the two that I thought were, were, were really excellent um, was the return of Austin Powers. I, saw, I, remember, I remember this one. Awesome. Yeah, now. Really, really awesome. And it's, it's like the full, it, it's like one, two, three, four, at least four, four members of the, of the old cast came back to do a commercial. And it was great because they were they were just going back and forth about you got to just see it. It's it's great. It's just really great. Talk about Scotty. Scotty do. Scotty do. Scotty do. <laughs> um. And then my favorite, and I will tell you, my favorite all time. Check that out. All time. Oh it's geez. Difficult to say. My favorite all time Super Bowl commercials commercials have been the e-trade babies the e-trade <laughs> babies came out during the super bowl and after that they went for years and years and years after that they came out in the super bowl they were the funniest commercials they still are funny and oh my one of the first commercials that they did i think it was the second second commercial that they did i think was an E Trade Baby commercial, and I I was on the ground laughing so hard. You texted great. about this, I think, to either me or to the group chat. You're like, "Oh my yes. god, the E Trade Babies are back!" E Trade Babies are back, and I wish they had more, but obviously it's seven million dollars, so they must have not had fourteen uh, to be able to create another commercial. But the first one was very funny, so I ho I'm hoping some more times what happens is they take those commercials and they stick them on regular right. TV for yeah. a couple of months right. and then they, yeah. you know, just be, I'm hoping they throw the E-Trade Baby one on there because I thought it was fantastic. I just thought it was great. And I love the E-Trade Babies. Um, they're just, I know E-Trade's got some other commercials that are out now, but I love the fact that they brought back E-Trade Babies. So I was like, wait a minute, the baby's talk. No, that's not E-Trade, is it? <laughs> it was great. It was awesome. So that that was so my two favorites were the E Trade and then Austin Powers was probably my second one. And the third was probably having Arnold, you know, um <laughs> having Arnold Schwarzenegger walk around and or driving a car and just turn red lights to green and you know, talk about electric cars. It was kind of weird. He looked like Moses or something. Moses. Um I don't know what it was. But anyway, I thought that was pretty cool. I thought they were pretty good. Um, you know, they seem to get better and better every year just because of the technology they use um, and they can use. So they seem to get pretty good uh, here and there. But I thought they were pretty good this year. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. So that's, that's, yeah. All, that's all I got. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's all you got. I figured that's all you got on that, which is all good. So we're we're actually at the, the 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 time of the show where we where we grab our final thoughts for the for this episode. So I wanted to throw it over to you, Robbie, and I wanted to to uh, find out what your final thoughts are on this super episode of the Sports Blitz. Yeah, so I, I have a couple of final thoughts for, of for course this you episode. Um, I know taking taken after you with the with the multiple final yeah, thoughts. Yeah, what's up with the double? No, no, no. Uh, my first one is kind of interesting, but also kind of somber at the same time. Um, a main woman, uh, her name is Myrtle Mil Millage, M-I-L-L-E-D-G-E. 
uh, from the town of Mexico, Maine, which is kind of a random name for a town. Um, and she is recognized actually by the New England Patriots as their oldest fan. Uh, she unfortunately uh, passed away uh, on Tuesday at the age of 106. Uh, she, it says here, uh, was well, she was well into her 40s when the Patriots became a franchise in the old American Football League in 1960. They honored her as their oldest fan earlier, earlier this month with a personalized jersey with the number 106 on the back. Uh, and also she served as the Grand Marshal of, uh, the, of a parade for the team in May of 2019, a few months after they won Super Bowl uh, 53. So, or, excuse, no, sorry, Super Bowl 54. Um, Sorry, 53. Yeah, I was right the first time. Jeez. Come on, Robbie. Get together. <laughs> get together with your math here. Come on now. Um, no, but in all seriousness, obviously, uh, we here at the Sports Blitz send our you know, condolences out to, uh, to Myrtle's family. And obviously, our thoughts and prayers go out to them. But I just thought that was kind of interesting. You know, the oldest recognized Patriots fan by the, by the team themselves, recognized by the team themselves. And... Uh, you know, uh, she got to see a lot of a lot of great moments in Patriots uh, history there, all the way apparently back from when they <laughs> first the last became a years. franchise. When they first became a franchise, so uh, definitely a rest in peace to uh, to Myrtle. Mellon. I will tell you, not a lot of great moments back then. The last twenty years, great moments. Yes, not a lot of great moments before that. Yeah, no, you. you're. You're you're a few. right. A few mixed in there, but uh, no, you're yeah, right. A few. The, but no, just like I said, uh, our deepest condolences out to her family, and uh, definitely lived a good long life there at age 106. So uh, definitely rest in peace to her. Uh, the other thing that I actually wanted to sort of go off of football for a second to the hockey world. I know I was using the term "civ." earlier but uh, i want to dive deeper into uh, to hockey with my other final thought it's sort of a two-part final thought within a final thought uh and that is that a couple of hockey related championships were crowned within the last few days and one is a local tournament that was back this year after a year's hiatus and that's the bean pie uh, which, for those of you who don't know, is a college hockey tournament featuring the four Boston area D1 hockey schools, Harvard, BC, BU, and Northeastern. Obviously, uh, was not played last year due to the pandemic, uh, but this year was back on the first two Mondays in February, which is very exciting for me as someone who has attended and watched many a bean pie over the year. Uh, was very happy to see it back at TD Garden and uh, back in full effect. Unfortunately for me as a BC fan, BC did not win the Bean Pod this year. And uh, even more so, unfortunately, it was actually BU uh, who captured the Bean Pod title, defeating Northeastern one to nothing. In Sorry, the I'm just kidding. My, my two grandfathers went to BU, but that's fine. I'm not, I'm not um, necessarily a but A-list, as much as it pains me to say as a BC fan, I do extend my, extend my congratulations <laughs> to the Terriers on winning the, the Bean Pod title. And what was an exciting uh, championship game, literally a one nothing final where the winning goals are score of like two minutes to play in regulation. So uh, definitely a thriller of a championship game. And the other one, I did want to give a, a brief shout out to the United States women's ice hockey team who, you know, unfortunately did not capture gold, but definitely gave a valiant effort in the gold medal game, which was just held last night in Beijing. Uh, they unfortunately came up just a little Probably bit. Probably stayed up fun. to watch it. I did not by any means, uh, but. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, I know. I, I, I Hey, listen, I know people that did though. So it's not all that far fetched. Um, not, it's really not. But they At did, least see the replay, but. Yeah. They unfortunately came up a little bit short against gold <laughs> in Canada, uh, falling three to two in the gold medal game. But hey, I mean, listen, if you can medal in an Olympics, I mean, I have you know, you're definitely uh, 
it, tough to definitely do. a tough thing to do. And I just want to congratulate the U.S. women on their silver medal. I'm sure, I'm sure it's not something they want to hear because I know them and they definitely, you know, go for the gold every year, especially, you know, wanting to beat Canada. That's become sort of a big rivalry in women's hockey, especially over the past few Olympics and otherwise. And, uh, you know, even though they came up a little bit short this year, I thought they showed a very valiant effort, especially they were down three, nothing in the gold medal game. And they came back to make it three, two, but just came up a little bit short. So like I said, just wanted to congratulate them on the silver medal and, uh, send a little shout out to them as, uh, you know, as the Olympics and the Olympic hockey tournament wraps up, uh, in Bay in Beijing. So, uh, those are my sort of final thoughts, Doug, my sort of three final thoughts and sort of two final thought segments, I guess if you want to call it that, but, uh, let me toss it back over to you for, uh, what are your final thoughts here as we round up, uh, tonight's episode. I actually have two, and I was was only going to have one, but I have two also. Um, so my first one is, um, I, I know, I just want to see what what Robbie's reaction is going to be when I when I say this. He might already know, but if he doesn't know, I want to see the reaction. If he does know, I still want to see a reaction. Um, uh, the headline is MLB sets agreement deadline. Two sides must come to an agreement of a, for, for a new CBA by February 28th for the season to start on time. MLB has told the MLBPA um, that that is the deadline that they can actually start on time. So my feeling is. Oh, we're doomed. We're doomed. Is that okay? We're no, doomed. No, no, no. Nope. I, I'm, nope. <laughs> no, Bobby, no, Bobby's I, done. No, 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 Bobby's done. <laughs> Robbie's, <laughs> Robbie's walking away. Robbie's done. He's walking away, uh, which makes sense because Robbie's. This is this is right. this is Robbie's. This is Robbie's livelihood, basically. Sorry, during, during sorry. I, I I needed I, I needed during to have a moment the there. Um, this is like there may like, actually like, be a giant hole in my in my picture. door over here that you can't see. Uh, Pictures and catches were already supposed to show up at uh, at spring training. <laughs> Already, well, I, I don't, thought, mean, I don't I thought, mean to bring I thought, you down, I Robbie. Thought you, I thought you were my friend. I don't know why you <laughs> such a torturing me here. Oh. I'm not uh, to torture you. I think what I'm saying is, is that us in the sports. I'm shocked I have hair what? left. By the way, we just want, I've we, literally we, have been pulling my hair out, just listening to all this greed and just. Uh, just anyway, sorry. Continue, Robbie. I mean, I don't, Robbie I don't and I. Robbie and I and the fans of the Sports Blitz want the MLB to get together with the MLBPA, get together, make an agreement, and cut the crap already. Make an agreement, and let's move on. Because it's crap on a stick as far as I'm concerned. You're holding up baseball season. It shouldn't be held up, and you need to do something. You need to do it now. You're going to kill your sport. You are going to kill your sport, a sport that I have loved since I was six years old, (laughs) because of your stupid greed and stupid just self-centered. It's it's ridiculous. You are going to alienate the the slim fan base you have left by doing this. If if your season does not start time, or if you don't have a season at all. Like, it it is just, it is, it is so Ugh, it's just so ridiculous. I, I'm, I'm like literally, I, 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 like I said, you know me, Doug. I love the sport of baseball. I've loved it through thick and thin. I mean, I, I've never wavered in my love for baseball. This has just got me so pissed off at MLB at just the greed of both sides in this matter that I just, I, I, I'm, I'm disgusted. I am absolutely disgusted that it has come to this point. And you know what? If MLB can't get their act together and get their head out of their asses, they deserve, like, they're, they deserve whatever is coming to them as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I, I'm, done defend, I'm done defending baseball if they're going to resort to these, these measures that, again, are just going to alienate the rest of the fan base that has stuck with them through thick and thin. Like they they deserve whatever they get as far as I'm concerned if they don't get their freaking act together. Uh, and I know I know I'm ranting now. I'm going into your final thoughts, and I completely oh, this is great, man. This I completely is, this apologize. Great. This is you great. Bring, this is what people want to see. <laughs> um, you, Especially you, about, you, I mean, you're passionate. You're passionate about the sport. 
You've been you've been you've been watching the sport. You've been you've played the sport. You, you've umpired. You've you've you've, I've you've, done it you've all been employed in, in the like, sport. Like, let, you, people don't understand. I've done it all. I've umpired. I've coached. I've played. <laughs> I I've done. I've literally did. Any, I don't think there's anything you can uh, that you could do in the sport of baseball that I haven't done in my you know almost 32 years of existence on this earth. I mean, it really right. is. Exactly. It, yeah. it, it's. It just it it is it is I mean it, it has been and always probably will be my favorite sport on this planet and I know you know a lot of people would kind of chuckle at that and say it's like oh that sport you know is on the way out already and uh, and all that but you know, I I fight for it and I defend it every single day and this is this is what I get basically egg on my face because MLB and the MLBPA are just a bunch of self centered arrogant pricks who just can't can't you know can't see the train that literally the lights are right in front of their eyes and they still can't see it so that's that, that's what i got <laughs> that's what he's got oh wow okay sorry well, sorry that, i did that, not well, did not mean i did not no, mean no no it's okay hey listen I, I listen you're absolutely right to, to you're, our you're, viewers out there you're, you're absolutely I'm right just, i'm you very every, emotional about this issue you you're, you're absolutely right you have every right to rant about it now now we actually know that there's a date okay so we're looking at february 28th as being the date it's not gonna which... happen it's I not know, gonna I, happen I, I i hey listen i'm the biggest optimist doug as you know i'm the biggest optimist there is he, when it comes is. to things like this he even is. i'm it, saying to it's everything. not gonna happen there's no not snow like i literally would put it at if i had to put a percentage doug i put it at less than five percent chance that any that this gets done by february 28th and i hope i'm wrong Believe me, I desperately hope that I am wrong, but I just, I don't see it. I, I don't see it, even in the most optimistic frame of mind, I don't see this yeah, happening. Both sides, are, both sides right are way, now. way far away from each other. Right am, now, I, am, so. I mean, like, am I, am I, Doug, am I missing something here? Is there no. like some giant or no. eureka moment that's going to happen in the no. next 11 days? Like, no, I mean, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't see it either. I don't see it either, but, but, but we, we need to know that that there there is a date that they're looking at and um you know i just they just need to get off their collected asses collective asses and yeah seriously. Just make this happen in some way and and i, I think you're absolutely right i don't think anything's going to happen at, at, at this time and i think it's going to go on for, for 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 quite a while i'd be very surprised if something if all of a sudden something caved in um but i'd be very surprised about that but uh, again I, I know i know this is a I didn't bring it up to 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 have this be no. a source subject no, for Robbie. I, I just no, brought it up I because know, I noticed I, know. I got a notification no, about it. So I, 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 wanted I was to mention jo- it, so. I was joking when I said that. I didn't. I know. No, you, no, no, it's, it's all good. It it's all good. It's, it's it's all good. I don't have a problem with that. Um, my my second one is 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 a little bit more is a little bit more on the positive side. Um, <laughs> good, is, please, please, we need which some positivity. Is, which is which is um, I'm 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 gonna. I'm going to say right now that I, I think it's a, uh, I don't think it's going to happen, but I think it's a really, really good opportunity. Um, as, as people know, if people don't know, uh, the Celtics actually sent out seven players. Um, and, uh, Brad Stevens is obviously not scared to get rid of dead weight and get rid of, uh, get rid of players if he needs to get rid of players and bring back a player or two, uh, which he did. Um, and we'll be talking about, about that soon down the road, but we basically got Daniel Tice back, and we got a guy named Derek White, who from the Spurs, who's a very good player. Who I'm trying to figure out why the Spurs gave him up because he's very, very good off the bench. What a, he's had a couple of really good games to start off with here in Boston. I mean, he's he looked very has sharp been already. Very, very good. And yes. there are times, and there are times that he misses shots, but he does so many other things that that yeah. that make things so much better for the Celtics at the time. So my feeling is, and they have like two or three other roster spots that are available. Um, because I T I T I T I T that's, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. It is Rack time to bring truck, man, back it up. It is t- <laughs> you don't even need to do that. You don't no, I know. I'm obviously joking. Give him, about that, give but... him a, give him a 10 day contract. Yeah. Give him a 10 day contract. Give him a contract. Let him come see. here and prove himself off the bench. Let him prove to, uh, because we need shooting. We need shooting off the bench. That's what we need. We need it desperately. We need it badly. IT can give it to us. It's time to bring Isaiah Thomas back into the fold. It's time to give him at least a 10-day contract so he can prove himself, so he can get it. And let me tell you, 
it wouldn't it wouldn't be a bad thing to give him a ten day and after ten days let him let him run out the season for you. Are you going to win the championship this year? No, you're not. But give him a chance to come back so the fans can really thank him, so that, so he can thank the fans, so he can get out there and do what he needs to do. That's my personal opinion. Brad, you're not scared to go out and get players if you need to get players. He's very very good off the bench because he can he can he can give he can give that excitement off the bench. He can get the crowd into it. Um, he's a crowd favorite. He he's actually he actually did he's been on a few ten day contracts uh, this past year one with the Lakers just recently um, he didn't play a lot and that was the issue um, with the Lakers but the Lakers are all screwed up anyway so that's beside the point but give him a ten day contract see what he can do off the bench he gives you some scoring off the bench is exactly what we need right now now Brad said we're gonna bring in some young players we'll bring in some young players that's okay. Bring in some young players. You still got two or three roster spots that you can fill out. Do you have to fill them out? No. One of those roster spots is the only one I want you to do is bring back Isaiah Thomas. And I'm not talking about the one from the 80s. I'm talking about the one we just had that we had in the Celtics. Bring back Isaiah Thomas. Bring him back for a 10-day, at least just so we can show what he can do. Absolutely. Brad Stevens, you got to do it. And I, I, I got and, well, and I, I gotta say that I actually did. Um, I did see Brad in person at a local high school basketball game recently, but I did not. I, I did not approach him and 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 tell him, you know, and tell him from Doug and from both of us here at the sports bus to go get it. Maybe I should have, but uh, I think you start, should have started the it chant. Yes, just just a one bring man. Back IT. Bring, bring, bring back, back IT. IT. Bring back bring IT. Back IT. Bring, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Bring them back. Bring them back. Yeah. Um, or just an IT champ. IT. 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 Now nobody right, would right. know what the hell you were talking about. <laughs> they would think I'm talking about technology. You know, it's like, all right. Bring back IT. Right. Right. Bring back uh, uh, information technology. But yeah, so that's that's basically it. That's our yeah. episode for for this week for the Sports Blitz. Uh, just remember to watch other shows. We got other shows here. Marvel at the movies with Kyle and I. We just the episode hasn't dropped yet, but we just did it last week. So Kyle's doing a little bit of editing. He's gonna throw it right out there to you. When it's out there, you'll know. Um the um on the couch talking sports. New just, episode. You're just yep, new episode gonna be dropping coming, anytime. Coming very soon. Yeah, very uh, soon. Coming in and good very stuff. Soon. Good stuff. Yep, absolutely. And of course. We have our sports blitz, uh, which should be out in in, uh, in in the next few days. Also, which is this episode right here. <laughs> if you're watching this, and the episode is out. Yeah, if you're watching this, the episode <laughs> is definitely out. If you're not watching it, it's not out yet. So keep waiting. Um, and I'm not, I'm not really sure why I just said that. So, <laughs> I just thought the fact that you said that. Like, if you're no, watching I know, this, I don't know why the episode it. is out. I know. Really? <laughs> you mean it's not out yet? Really? We're not, not doing live? this live. Oh, I guess it's not live. We'll do it's it live. live. It's not live. We'll do it live. We'll do it live on tape. Anyway, we are on YouTube. We're on Facebook. We're yes. on Twitter. Yes. Um, you know, subscribe and hit the bell when you when, when you get the episodes. Hit the bell, man. More episodes. Hit the bell. You need to hit the bell. Bang. Yeah. Uh, thank you to our two sponsors, Simon Organizing and Wes Woodson. And uh, we had a great time to talk to you very soon on the Sports Blitz. I'm Doug. That's Robbie. I'm not sure where you are. You're either up or down, or I'm not sure where. Um, but that's Robbie, and we will see you very soon. Thanks for joining. Thanks for tuning in. See you, everybody.